recognizes Representative Wallace. Thank you. I just have one question for the sponsor. So you, the sponsor yields. Thank you. Are we making policy or are we playing respectability politics in here today? The effect of this legislation would deem it paramount to come through this policy making body when making changes to the child care assistance program. We are making good policy. Thank you. To the bill. The overtones, undertones, implicit and explicit, ongoing stereotypes of what working families look like, I believe is at the core of why we have cut so many services in this current discussion or have voted not to fund services because we believe that a particular segment of people don't deserve something. We think those people don't deserve child care assistance. Those people don't live in my district. The people in my district are the taxpayers and the people in other districts are not. And then we are so willing to put victims of domestic violence at risk by saying you must provide your contact information, your address to the very person who abused you, which is perhaps why you are now a single parent and need child care assistance. We also are forgetting the fact that although we somehow recovered from our recession, we have more low wage jobs than at any other point. A minimum wage does not provide for a family, and therefore there are plenty of two-parent households where there's a mommy and a daddy who need child care assistance. So for all of these moral judgments and all of this whole idea of what's respectable and who deserves what, that's not what we're here to decide. We are not here to decide anybody's moral stance in life and whether or not they are worthy of receiving something. There is an eligibility requirement that was already in place. There were already processes to check on income of the household. How do I know? Because six years ago, I had child care subsidies myself. Mm. And was I just some lucid woman who didn't know who the daddy was and had no education and had no nothing? No, I was a woman with a master's degree, a broken engagement due to domestic violence, who mm. picked up the pieces of her life, and part of doing that was re receiving child care subsidies. Another point, we are talking about people being able to better themselves, go on to sustainability and financial sustainability, but we will not allow for coursework or class time in higher education to be covered under the current rules. So, yeah, we'll get you a high school diploma. However, in many situations without a high school diploma, additional certifications, or some form of higher education, you cannot go on to provide for yourself without public assistance. But we will say, no, we won't pay for you to go to college. I have a constituent white right now in her last year of nursing school who cannot complete her BSN in nursing because the emergency rules do not allow for course time to be covered as part of what they will pay for with the subsidy. Now, if we're saying that we want to save this state dollars, then we would throw every vote in this chamber on this bill because one dollar investment investing gives us seven dollars in our economy for this type of service. But it's not about the money, because if it was about the money, we wouldn't be standing here right now. If it was really about what was bettering lives, we would all make sure that everybody had access to it. So go ahead, don't vote or vote present. But please know that what you are doing is setting our children up for failure, and you are ultimately setting our economy up for failure, and you are ultimately stating that you do not care about working families. Mm. Go ahead, State Rep.